Well, I want to talk about parasites and your cat. And uh, this is kind of an interesting topic because there's one weird type of parasite that actually needs to complete its life cycle inside a cat. It's absolutely the only place that it can complete its life cycle with the eggs. And that is Toxioplasma gondii or T. gondii. Uh, and what it does, and I show here a little kitty cat looking at a mouse, and the mouse is saying, Hello, kitty cat. How are you doing? Uh, actually, what this, this T. gondii parasite does to the mouse, it makes the mouse um, lose its fear of cats. Believe it or not. And maybe this was an evolutionary process because it, the, mouse, the, the parasite that's in the mouse has to be eaten. The mouse has to be eaten by the cat to get inside the cat so it can, the, the parasite Toxioplasma gaudi could actually complete its life cycle and go on from there. Now, uh, I'm going to actually show, tell you, like, you're probably thinking, well, if my cat has this, do I have this? Well, I, I'm going to get into all that kind of stuff, too. And also some of the stuff you could probably maybe do about it because um, there's some cool technology out there, too. So, anyway, uh, here you got your, uh, you know, cat lady, too, and Batman. And uh, here's the cat and mouse, and here's the other cat and the mouse getting out. The mouse is getting to say hi because he's got Toxioplasma gondii in him. It's weird, and it's really true that this parasite will cause the mouse to actually want to be eaten by the cat or be friendly with the cat or something like that because it's not the mouse doing it, it's the parasite. And I don't know if the parasite was that smart. It's probably not. It's just that that's the way evolution made things happen. So anyway, between 20% and 60% of cats are infected with T. gondii or Toxioplasma gondii but very few ever show any clinical signs. So, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a very strange life cycle that this thing has. It goes, here's the host, basically. Well, here's the oocyst, and they're, you know, excreted or whatever, and the mouse picks them up, and to complete the life cycle with the eggs and all that has to be from the cat. Now, this can also get into end-stage intermediate hosts, which could be present for life, which could be people, and it could be uh, animals that people eat, like the, the cow, the sheep, the pig, or whatever, the pork, whatever it is, and they get into people. Now, um, I just want to answer another question, though, probably just popped up, as well, can it go directly from the cats to the people? Um, actually, it says research indicates that contact with cats or owning a cat does not increase the risk of T. gondii infection in humans. You know, that's one thing, um, you know, some people have said, you know, if you're, you should get rid of your cat because of uh, T. gondii and all that. No, 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 it doesn't happen that way. You know, the, the, uh, the eggs from the T. gondii, if it's in the cat, it, it does not affect humans. Now, the cats that usually have this, this T. gondii, are usually the more wild outdoor cats that eat mice or something or outside. Indoor cats would be less likely to have this, but still, 20 to 60 percent of all cats are infected with T. gondii, and they don't actually show too many signs of it. Now, I'm going to actually get into probably what could actually happen here, but T. gondii is unusual that it virtually any warm-blooded animal can be infected with the parasite. But cats are totally required to complete the life cycle. Totally required. So, in other words, that's why this cat and this mouse, this mouse is like saying, hey, I want, I'm jumping out of here because I got the parasite's telling the mouse to do this. Or You know what? I don't think the parasite was that smart. It's just that that's just the way evolution made things happen, you know. But if this mouse, if this parasite that's in this mouse is not eaten by the cat, and getting inside the cat, it can't complete its life cycle. It's weird. That's the kind of that's the kind of parasite it is. It's so you know, cats are like uh, it fools the mice into being eaten by cats or something. Now, if you have an indoor cat, there's less likelihood of that happening. But you don't know because you don't know what's in the in the actual cat food, right? So, and it's estimated that there's more than 500 million people that are infected, half a billion people that are infected with this parasite worldwide. But they don't show a lot of signs of a problem, and it may not be a problem until they're sick with something else, and then this parasite 
becomes a problem because you're weak with something else. You know, you know, if you're weak with a flu or if you're weak with cancer or something like that, and you got this parasite in you, you know, it's something you want to get rid of. Actually, um, you know, probably I would think too, just like any other parasite, like T. Gandhi probably has parasites within that parasite, and he carry other parasites throughout your body, so you want to get rid of it. But you will not get it, get this from the cat directly. It's not in a litter box. It's not on a fur. It's uh, it's like they say, even vet veterinarians who work with cats all the time, they don't get this. They don't get this. You know, it actually goes from it gets in the cat from the food, basically. Uh, from what if a cat eats a mouse or eats some tainted canned food or something like that that has this in it, and then it gets uh, into other parts of the life system. It can actually go from the mouse to the uh, the cow or whatever the hell it is or something, you know, because the cat will shed a certain amount of these uh, eggs, whatever it is. But they're not present, like I said, they're not present in a litter. They're not present in, in the fur. So um, eventually they get out, though, and it could get into other life. But, you know, where people could mainly get it is not from touching the cat or anything like that. It's from other foods. But it's pretty likely that most cats, or like say 20 to 60%, so maybe that's not most, it depends. A significant amount to most cats actually have this parasite, and it does affect their health. Now, there's a way to get rid of it, maybe. You know, this is the one deal because I always have, I, you know, I'm going to interject this. This is actually the uh, spooky software. That you, you'd have to look at other of my videos if, you, if you're first looking at this. But you could take a claw clipping from a cat and put it in a remote device, and they got these frequencies that you can transmit the frequencies to the cat's DNA directly and maybe address the problem. That would be pretty cool because, you know, a cat um, is just going to be roaming around, doesn't want to sit still, doesn't want to be hooked up to anything that is a frequency transmitter. This is actually a DNA transmission thing where you can actually transmit the frequency from the cat claw to the cat itself with this program. And uh, this is something I have, and I guess, you know, if you're looking at this video from something else, this might be a cool way to t address the problem, you know? It might be. It may be. And uh, I don't know if 100% sure, but uh, it probably definitely has some effect, I would think. I don't really know for sure, but the thing is, it's simple to do, and it's like the only thing I know electronically you could do with the cat. So I figured I'd interject that here. But, uh, you know, it's an unusual type of... Um, ailment <laughs> It'd be a type of parasite because it's a cat is required to complete its life cycle it will not complete this toxioplasma gandhi will not complete its life cycle if there were no cats so that's why the mouse gets eaten by the cat because the mouse says you know the parasite makes the mouse think well whatever but it does affect humans in bad subtle ways if it gets inside a human so uh it's something you should try to address because there's more than, they say there's more than 500 million people are infected worldwide. That's quite a bit. And it could be in virtually any warm-blooded animal can be infected with the parasite. And, you know, so if you're eating beef or, you know, pork or something, or whatever the heck it is, and it has this in it, usually it's not cooked that well or something like that, well, then you can get it. But it's cats that are required to complete the life cycle. So it's pretty likely that a cat has this stuff and something you want to probably address. And um, But, you know, I don't know how important that is, but I just figured to put it out here for, uh, you know, some information because this is fairly common in cats, especially if you've got a cat that's outside, this toxi Toxoplasma gondii. Um, now, I am not going to elaborate on this spooky software. I'll probably point to some links on a remote device, how to use it, or whatever the heck it is. You know, it'd be pretty cool. You can actually, and you know, that's the one thing. I don't know. Maybe it would. Maybe it would. You know, it seems to be pretty strong. It seems to be pretty strong in some instances. And, uh, but, you know, with a cat, um, you know, if you just take a claw clipping and you put it in a remote device and you run this electronic frequency, um, yeah, I mean, um, I, to me, it's worth a try worth a try probably you know 
<laughs> I'd hate to state flat out, is it going to work or not? That's the one thing. I don't want to say that. I personally think it would, but, you know, <laughs> that's my personal opinion. And I think there is, well, it's this stuff is so damn, this stuff is so new with this remote stuff. I don't know, like, if it's definitely going to work every time and all that kind of junk, too, but... You know, that's a, it's a pretty good option to use for cats because you don't need to have them like, uh, here, put these electrodes on your paws and stand still. They're not going to do that, right? Anyway, so, uh, I just figured I'd point this out. It's a very interesting type of uh, parasite that's only found in cats. And, uh, well, mainly, it needs a cat to complete its life cycle. It's not only found in cats. It's found in most warm-blooded animals, including humans. But it needs a cat to complete its life cycle, so it's often found in cats. And, uh, well, anyway, uh, there's ways to get rid of it, and there's probably some electronic ways to get rid of it, too. So, just want to put this out here because uh, I found this to be kind of interesting that that's uh, probably the only parasite I ever heard of that needs a cat, has to have a cat to complete its life cycle. Toxioplasma gondii. Toxioplasma gondii. So... Yeah, that's that's really what it is. But it's telling you owning a cat does not necessarily increase the risk of T. Gandhi infection in humans. But if you own a cat, it's probably a good chance that he's got this parasite, he or she has that parasite, and you probably want to try to get rid of it. 